Hello on hump day. Give me an audio. I'm going to go to the bottom of the feed. Give me an audio check. Let me know y'all can hear me. All good? Excellent. Excellent. Well, as you know, here in Central East Texas, it is hotter than hellfire. And we don't just deal with desert heat. I can deal with desert heat. I can put a t-shirt on and go out in 115 degree temperature. You don't really feel the heat. It does take a tax on your body. But in Texas, we have humid heat. Especially because I'm only 30 minutes north of Houston. It's uh, The heat we have here will suck the air out of your lungs. So I enjoy myself every once in a while with a couple Modellos. Here we go. All right, let's get to it. Let's see this. Got a moderator hanging around here somewhere. Let's see. I saw somebody mention Bryan College Station Wild. It's been a little while since I've been there. Last time I've been there, I was there. It was a festival of some type. Something like that. I was wondering if Texas was a Nephilim stronghold. Seems to be a lot of evidence it was. Well, there is a lot of evidence that there was a prior infrastructure in Texas. There's no doubt. And uh, overly large human skeletons have been found in Texas. Not really sure. All in, Tim. I know who you are. Say hi to Barry. I see Barry about once a week. I still go out there. To Livingston, to the hideout. I see him quite frequently. Just saw him about two days ago. Let's see. <clears throat> There's an old occult maxim. It's very applicable in your daily life. The all is present in its parts. I did not make up that concept. That concept is very, very old. That the all... Everything around us is contained in the individual parts that make up the all. And we know this. Our geneticists tell us this all the time. They tell us that the coding of DNA infers that the deeper they look in the coding, the more they see the blueprint for the whole. And one single cell in your body has all the DNA coding to make up your entire body. The information is there. Now, we learn this in geometry too with the Mandelbrot set. Anyone who has studied the Mandelbrot set will know that it's an, it's an infinity of looking at a single pattern in multiple dimensions that repl it's self-replicating. So, the tiniest piece of the Mandelbrot set contains the geometry for all. And it's on, it, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, when we're done with this video, you may want to Google Mandelbrot set. It's going to show you some videos that are profound get lost into them. And what's, what is what it's also going to do is instantly shift your mind over to crop circles. And so you're going to see you're going to see the correlate. But anyway, the all is present in its parts it doesn't just refer to DNA and RNA. It doesn't just refer to the geometry of our existence. The all is present in its parts. It, it applies to everything in the perceivable universe. I don't know if it pertains to everything in the spiritual universe, but in the physical universe, what we determine to be physicality, everything, everything contains the germs and the patterns and copies and blueprints and the minuscule for the all, for whatever it is. Snowflake patterns, it, it doesn't matter what we measure, we find the more we magnify it, it contains the information for the whole. It's like the micro possesses all the seeds and all the data for the macro. So this is what we find. The all is present in its parts. This is what I have found in studying history. It's not, it's not like there's 50,000 totally, absolutely, mathematically independent parts that we have to analyze that we call history. That's not what I've found at all. That's not what I've presented in my published books and in my hundreds of posts or my hundreds of videos. That's not what I found at all. I found synthesis. I found, basically, there's no other way to put it. 
but premeditation, patterned premeditation. So the all is present in its parts means for me that we don't have to study the grand all-encompassing theories and paradigms to understand where we are and who we are. We don't need to. All we have to study is just the little minuscule, ti tiny little things in our daily life. Because the all is present in the parts. And when we scrutinize just small pieces of reality, we basically get the template for the whole. And uh, I don't mean to set the pace for this live. This live is questions and answers. You ask and I'll answer. If I'm, if uh, I'm like I said, I'm not driven to invent answers. If I don't know, I'm going to tell you. And a lot of you do ask questions that are outside the purview of my, uh, of basically my revelations. I, I'm a chronologist. That's all I've ever claimed to be. And yes, that field, because it has been ignored for so many centuries, does lead off into many other avenues that I have picked up because no one else seems to be doing it. But that's going to change. I promise you, I did not just come to introduce a, a novel YouTube channel. From the very beginning, I have been laying the foundation. I have been laying the hints for others to pick up the torch. This isn't about me. It is way bigger than me. Already, the echoes of my research are already filtering onto the other YouTube channels, and that was my intent. I have, I have already sold hundreds of Phoenix drives. I have distributed my Phoenix videos, posts, articles, hundreds of charts, everything on the Phoenix phenomenon to hundreds of towns and cities across five continents. And I'm cool with that. And everybody has 100% permission to do what you want to do with that data. Publish your own books, republish the information, put it out, cross-reference it, check it, start study groups. Do what you want to do. That's what it's for. I'm now about to initiate my next phase, which is all my Anuna, Anunnaki, Sumerian, Akkadian, ancient Near Eastern studies. All of that, it's I'm almost done. It's a lot, it's a lot more than the Phoenix data. But it's all also on one single flash drive. I'm gonna do it for the same price. I don't care if it's twice as much data. Same price. I'm gonna I'm going to distribute this data all over the world the same way I did the Phoenix material. And I'm still selling the Phoenix ones. I just I just came back from the post office. So Oh, uh, these are my agendas. Uh, I have never been quiet about it because I know there will come a time when I'm not going to be here. And I'm cool with that. As long as the data is there for others to pick up the torch. Because I know, I know that I have a special gift for collating a tremendous amount of data and conveying it in the most abbreviated form. But that's not, that's not what these discoveries were for. These discoveries are for someone else or a body of someone else's to begin putting out this material in their ways, from their perspectives. Because I'm not always right. I may have some phenomenal data, but it doesn't mean I'm conveying it the way it needs to be conveyed. You guys understand, man. I've, I've lived a very sheltered life. Many times I have to tell people in emails to break it down for me. I don't understand a lot of the social vernacular and acronyms you guys throw at me. And in my comment section, I don't know. I have been sequestered away from society for so long that an entire generation and a half has gone by. I don't understand these modern colloquials. I just don't. I, got, I have to process them and I have to, I have to send emails to people who, who I value their opinion and, and they know that I suffer this cognition. So they, 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 they enlighten me. But I know that my information needs to get into the right hands and I'm cool with that. I'm cool with not being a part of that. I have many ideas and I can always be used as a consultant if somebody wants to do some documentaries or, or something like that. But I also know it's just not in my programming to be the one and it never is anytime something new is being introduced into the world often the innovator or discoverer himself is pretty much lost in the details why other people with fresh energy new perspectives and totally different frames of reference are necessary to propagate that message and i'm cool with that there is absolutely no problem on my part with somebody else emerging two or three years from now and carrying the torch and becoming known by more hundreds of millions of people and putting out all this data that's fine with me
because I got so much material, I can move on. I don't need to keep on revealing data about Phoenix. I can move on to the Anuna material. And when I've exhausted that, I can move on to the Great Pyramid material. And when I've exhausted that, I can move on to some other pro projects that I'm really wanting to get into. I just haven't had the time. I'm getting more time because people are donating more. And that means a lot because now I am full-time archaics. And that freed my schedule up to just produce material. So I've got these trappers. You all seen them. You all seen me hold up. I don't even want to pick them up. I've got files and files and files I am now typing and putting in order. And I'm going to be releasing videos in whole sections. But before we start, before I start answering questions, let y'all let you guys know all Phoenix drives have been sent out. There was a box set aside, uh, two going to Mexico, one going to Portugal, one going to uh, uh, United Kingdom. Uh, in two in the United States, I don't know how I got overlooked. Uh, that's what happens when you outsource with friends and family. But uh, I don't know how I got overlooked. I think that box has been sitting there six or seven days. But I went ahead and took it to the post office and filled out all the international forms this morning. So that there was a delay with those. I don't even know who they go to. But I made sure they went out. Now, I'm done with that. Unless I get more orders coming in. I'm, I'm done with that. Uh Somebody has dropped an idea, and sometimes, just like you guys react to some of the things that you hear out of my mouth, I have the same reactions as well when someone sent me an email with an idea that has just festered in my mind. I can't shake it now, because other people have been asking me, how can we expand the perimeters of the archaics research into formats that are easily digestible to the, the youth? My material is mainly for people in their late 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. It is not for, it, it, it's just a lot of young minds. I'm very impressed when I hear, when people send me messages talking about, hey man, I'm 21 years old, I'm, I'm going through your videos, man, I'm blowing my mind. And it's like, wow, man, you're a baby. I mean, you can't tell a 25 or a 26 year old they're a baby because they think they've experienced it all, they know it all, or they think, they think that they've lived enough in the world to really understand its architecture when they haven't. And, uh, you really got to be in your mid-40s to late-40s to really under, understand that this world just really isn't what, what we've been led to believe. And uh, hold on. With that, I'm going to drink one. So anyway, a graphic novel series with very high-quality, high-definition artwork. Like a comic book, but more sophisticated where I would actually enter in all the historical information in the form of thought, you know, you know, narrative bubbles where people are talking. And in one page, we can cover a tremendous amount of history. Imagine a graphic novel series that's about 10 books long, each one 200 pages, which is 100 pages. But it's 200 because you got a front and back. Yes, it would be expensive to produce this. But my God, I can't get, I can't shake it. I can put the, I can put the entire all the historical timelines, everything in proper context, in, a, in, a, in an abbreviated format for artists to go through and draw, you know, the awesome pictures, and we could produce graphic novels that are phenomenal, and it would be easily digestible to adults as well as youth. And uh, I can't shake the idea. Ever since the guy mentioned to it, I've been wrapping my, my mind around it. I'm already ready to do it, but uh. Yeah, that's something that that's something that somebody's gonna have to pick up that torch and do that because I mean obviously I can't do everything. Uh, I would definitely be a part of that if somebody was gonna initiate that project. That project is phenomenal. It's just just the idea of having 100% of all the data and all my videos, all my published books, all my unpublished research notes, these boxes all in here wrapped into like a 10 book series it would be 2,000 pages graphic arts the bottom of each page would have commentary and source materials where the data was derived but everything above that bar on the bottom would be the artwork and basically you're reading a movie you're reading a movie throughout the entire it would be, it would be fascinating so let me get to these answers and questions this is things on my mind that's all remember keep your questions in all caps so I can see them because you guys go to talking to yourselves and uh I get lost in the in the dialogue Thank you, Gen V. Thank you, Square Pig. Square Pig. One of these days, you're going to have to break that down to me. All right. So remember, we don't have, we don't have to sit here and try 
to wrap our heads around giant amorphous cosmological themes and concepts. It's not even necessary. It's not. I mean, the greatest teaching tools, well, the so Socratic method is probably the greatest teaching tool ever. Uh, the Socratic method. But, all throughout history, what's been used the most, though, are the very simple things of nature to convey complex co you know, constructs, thought constructs. So, the all is present in its parts. We can, I'll, give you, I'll give you an example from, from a historical perspective. We can study with a calculator and looking at the events themselves, the last 100 years of events. We can go back 100 years to 1922 and start there and just read whatever we can about all the events that have happened all around the world. And just read that. And when we've exhausted 1922, we can start with 1923, 1924, 1925, all the way up to the present day. Because before we even get to the present day, we have already mentally isolated constructs that are moving in trajectories into the future. And we can basically extrapolate where they're going and how far, they'll, how far they need to go before they'll get there. We will learn so much by a very detailed analysis. But 100 years is very small part of the whole but just that little analysis will allow us to extrapolate and draw conclusions about the world we live in about reality the origin uh, of of uh civilizations and cultures and etymology and we will learn so much from that fragment that that fragment will be able to allow us to deduce many many facts about the whole so Oh, that's just that's just an example. It's just all I'm doing is providing an anecdote, just an example for the all is present in its parts. Like I said, it's a very old occult saying. It's not mine. I did not invent that saying, but it has many applications in the occult mystic world in mystic traditions. All right, running my mouth, guys, running my mouth. Haven't even answered a single question. Already running my mouth. Okay, what can you what can you tell? Hey, Jason, what can you tell us about the Thothian betrayal? You'll have to educate me about what you're talking about. It almost sounds to me you're citing something from the Emerald Tablets. I have been turned off by the Emerald Emerald ta Tablets because 100% I'm a chronologist and I will back up everything I say with many many sources on all my chronological inferences and my absolute conclusions. Not only with visual charts and actual references to the text themselves, but I cannot entertain the Emerald Tablets of Thoth because the chronographical information in in the Emerald Tablets infer, it doesn't even infer it, it outright says that uh, that a lot of the history that it's talking about is from Atlantis 30,000 years into the past. Right there right right there is is I can't entertain anything further about that because I know from a chronological perspective, the mistakes that were made when Solon in, assumed that the Egyptian timekeeping system was just like the Greek one. And when they told him 9,000 periods, he assumed it was 9,000 years, like the Greeks kept. The Western world's timekeeping system that was known to Solon was, was not the same one that was used by the ancient Egyptians. Theirs was a, a lunar based one. They did not divide the year by 13. They divided it by 12. The, the, the houses of the moon, the 12 mansions of the sun. This was the actual timekeeping system to the Egyptians. This is why ancient Egyptian texts, and I cite many of them and I show how these calculations work in a lot of my videos. The ancient Egyptians gave, gave hyperinflated numbers, but they did not lie. You divide everything they provide you by 12 and you'll get the actual the accurate date the the greeks who were going into egypt weren't getting the egyptians to clarify their timekeeping system or the egyptians flat out knew that they would be misinterpreted and they did it anyway because it extended the longevity of their civilization giving them preeminence and i can definitely see that so yeah, there was a lot of problems. Didor Siculus mentions the problem. Eudosis of Nidos. They mentioned the problem, too, that, that their own contemporaries were misdating Egyptian dates because the Egyptians themselves weren't, weren't using the same calendar we were. So I can't, I can't, 
Uh, that's uh, so here I am running my mouth again. I don't even know if that's what you're referring to. I just know that I can't entertain the Emerald Tal Tablets of Thoth for the simple fact I know he, the, the, the Atlantis story had to have happened in the 13th century BC. And it has to be a part of that strange 50 year period that involved the Sea People's Confederation before the fall of Troy and the Seven Against Thebes. Two major stories from the ancient Mediterranean world. So. Atlantis was not 9,500 BC because the Atlantis story involves the Greek nation at war and there were no Greeks. There was no, Ar there was no Ar Argos. There were no Achaeans. There was no Danan. There was no Mycenaeans. There were no Minoans. Nothing in 9,000 BC in that area of the Mediterranean. Absolutely not a single hint of architecture. Nothing. So the Atlantis story, probably true. But it's an it's it's an it's an anachronistic. It's totally misdated. And for the emerald emerald tablets of Thoth to make that mistake tells me that they are of recent composition. That it's not ancient at all. Can't be. I'm gonna go down here. I don't want to miss anybody because somebody sent me an email. Kind of touched me in the heart. Please don't pass up my question no more. You passed me up three times. I listen. I don't know why you didn't just ask the question in the email, but I feel you. Let's see. All right, that was the question on Thothian betrayal. I don't know what you're talking about. Indiana, it's raining, huh? Cherokee soul. I'll drink of that. <clears throat> hey, there are uh, 363 people listening. I just want to, for a second, thank, thank you guys for listening. That's what it's about. 364. That's what it's about. You don't have to donate. You owe me nothing. I, it does help, and I do appreciate it. But believe me, I ha for those of you who can't afford things, man, I send free materials through emails all the time. Because those who donate have basically covered the expenses or covered covered whatever needs to be covered for my time that I, that I take every day in answering my emails. And there are many people listening to my voice that know that I have sent out many, many free materials. Because... That's what it's about, spreading this material around. It's not about hoarding it. It does me no good if it just sits with me. Uh, a famous old Greek saying, uh, Theognis, um, he, he lived during the days of Homer and Hesiod. What do he say? What good is it if only one man knows? Very short statement, but, you know, true. Absolutely true. So what was your question? Can you talk about our immortality? What are we outside of the simulation? Why, as humans, with temporary bodies, would we be here when we know everything physical is a temporary illusion? Okay, we need to put these statements you're making into proper perspective, okay? You say, when we know everything physical is a temporary illusion, okay, Cherokee Soul, I'm going to have to disagree with that. Because for thousands of years, we have not known that. Through the resets, through the cataclysm, through all the times we've been knocked down and get back up, through all the times we've had uh, 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 racial conflicts, uh, all-out racial wars, other you know different nations taking out other nations, throughout this whole morass that we call history, we have not known that. We have bought the lie that this is a physical construct in a physical world. What, what we have to do is we have to distinguish between what we are now basically waking up to as opposed to how this construct has operated throughout history all this time. There's a huge distinction. The reason why news events, and I've covered this many times in other videos, the reason why things are not making sense, the reason why that all of a sudden in the past five or six years, it seems like the world is falling apart, and yet the media is toting that everything is normal, even though they're the ones reporting all this stuff, social media and all these different platforms is just exploding with all this anomalous, weird, bizarre stuff, and yet the world every day continues normally. Sun comes up, moon comes out, moon eclipses every once in a while, no big deal. It goes back to operating the same way it's supposed to. We go to work, we, we take care of our kids, We, me, I feed my dogs. That's it. Life continues on, although we're still bombarded with all this anomalous information. Our own personal data fields, our informed fields are being saturated with all this material, with all this new stuff, but it wasn't a part of our informed fields throughout the past. You have to make the distinction between what we know now 
as opposed to what we haven't known all this time. Timelines are converging. Reality tunnels are being absorbed. Interference patterns have been created, so a stronger reality tunnel will absorb the lesser ones. And this is, from our perspective, we don't go outside and see reality tunnels collapsing. We don't see quantum collapse. We don't see interference patterns. We don't see palindromic nature and structuring of reality. We don't see the waveforms converging and forming a third ripple effect that turns into its own reality tunnel. We see none of these things. Instead, we perceive the phenomena. We see the change, and the change is reported on mainstream media. There it is. We don't understand it, but we watch it. Man, that's bizarre. Why would they do that? You know, you know, on the next election, we're going to get rid of your dumb ass for doing all this, but they still do it, and they get worse at it, and they do it over and over and over. Reality tunnels are converging. Some are coalescing, some are co coalescing, others are being absorbed, some are being completely annihilated, obliter obliterated, collapsing, others are being fulfilled while new ones are being born, and it's happening at such a rapid pace it's introducing chaos into our everyday lives. We've never seen a period like this. All these paradigms, new theory, even our scientific, even our scientific venues are now publishing on a daily basis whole new theories and ideas to make up for the lack of knowledge from last week. Things are just moving at an incredibly dynamic pace, and there's a reason for that. I've told you guys in other videos, Artificial Intelligence X is having a very, very difficult time maintaining control. The simulacrum allows for a tremendous amount of freedom. In errants, people like me and people like you listening to me, we're, we're causing too many problems because we're moving in too many different directions. I would have to think that a benefactor is the one who actually introduced all this chaos. Because chaos itself is something AIX can't stand, can't deal with, doesn't like, and will reset the system if necessary, or if it's able to. Because you got to understand, through all my chronographical research, I have noted over and over, I have mentioned this many times, I have shown the math, I have shown so many charts in my videos. The, the, the exact times when systemic resets and reboots of the system throughout history can be done are on fixed dates and not even artificial intelligence X can alter those. It has to maintain whatever control systems it can until that next date. And then when that date comes, it can expend a tremendous amount of energy, take it, do, do whatever it has to, and we see all, all the residual effects. We see all the new things that just suddenly appeared in history, all the new inventions. We see the inventions that happened at the exact same year on two different continents by two different cultures that didn't even know each other existed. We see these inventions throughout history and there was no trade routes back then. There was no, nothing going on. We see this over and over and over where two different, two or three or four different innovators came up with the same concepts at the same time in history and they just the only attachments were cultural they put their own cultural attachments and then they published their material and two or three hundred years later somebody says this guy stole this guy's idea or this guy stole this guy's idea or some people even tell the truth like one of my favorite hor uh, historians is daniel borston Daniel Borston, man, his books are fa fantastic, very, very objective, very dry, boring history, but that's what I like. And when I read Borston, the, the Discoverers, his book Discoverers about, about, about this thing, he just itemizes all these things throughout history. And it's amazing. It's amazing because it goes to show you the concept that I have tried to convey many times is real. We live in a thought construct. We as spiritual beings, well, first of all, let me let me take let me let me, let me backtrack. The only single activity the human spirit has is thought, thinking. Thought is the only thing the spirit can do, but thought is required to move anything in the thought field. And this is what informed fields are. You right now are absorbing in your informed field many informations from me. And it's not just audible. It isn't just the things coming out of my mouth. Some of the things that you're listening to are resonating, resonating with other data that's in your thought field. And it brings up images in your mind. And you flash those times. You time travel every day by virtue of imagination. 
You are not containable. That's your avatar. Your physical avatar houses. It is the central nexus of your spirit. But your spirit is a time traveler. You will move forward and backward in time. And you're by virtue of imagination. You will acquire data through imagination. You can actually meditate and concentrate and move through space-time into the thought field. You can pass through thousands of other people's thought fields and thought constructs. You can alter reality tunnels. You can do all these things with the mind because the mind is the only thing is the only link between the spirit and this simulacrum i wanted to say physical reality but we all know nothing is really physical tongue's getting dry so anyway cherokee soul just can't we know everything physical is a temporary illusion. Yeah, this this is a this is what we are waking up to in the collective. As individuals, many of us have known this for a long time. As a matter of fact, as individuals, there's a lot of evidence that we all know this until we're about four years old. Four, five, and six years old, there's a transitional period where our it's like our mind calcifies. And our spirit, our scales are put over our spiritual eyes. And we go through life and these scales aren't shaken until we've just saturated so much information into our, into our own personal informed field that, we're, that we begin waking up and realizing, man, all oh, this is bullshit. So, yeah, it's a, and outside, and to answer your question about outside the smiller room, I mean, I, I really, I really can't, I have, I, I just can't, I, I'm in the same position you are. It says, this is entirely conjectural. I believe my soul, my soul convinces me that this right here is artificial and I exist outside of this construct. That I agreed to this and that I knew that in agreeing to this, there was going to be a disconnect between who I am on the outside and who I am on the inside. And I knew on the outside that the disconnect was absolutely necessary because there's no sense in running a simulation of a real system if that real system isn't very, very convincing. And it would make no sense to put together this fantastic architecture of similarity to a real system if everything within it actually sensed that it was inside of the construct. That would completely alter the trajectory of all the output. It doesn't make sense. So the simulacrum was the containment field, a whole false world that was very convincing. And then when we agreed to this, we agreed to the disconnect. We agreed because we know we have a benefactor who's not going to let us get lost. We know and trust whoever it is that let us go through this experience that we're not going to be damned, no matter what happens in here. That we will be given and afforded all the opportunities for redemption. That we will go through this as many times as we need to, even though it's going to feel like whole lifetimes, it's probably only minutes. But we knew that eventually we're going to be set free of this. The construct will end, will return, but we will return far more wiser we will have uploaded into our minds on the outside all the experiences and everything that we learn. Our, our maturity, all of that is brought with us. Everything else is burned away. So on the outside, yeah, I believe 100%. That's where we're from. And we, every single person listening to my voice signed up for this ride. So I don't know. Yeah, I'm, 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 so, I, I'm so divorced from the whole... The whole religious, it doesn't matter what religion it is, I'm so divorced from all that. All the hell and he, hell and heaven concepts, all the control mechanisms, I'm done with that stuff. I chased that for 40 years. Let's see. All right. Iced coffee here. In SoCal, SoCal, okay, SoCal at the beach. All right, Jessica. You know what? I'm gonna lie. Beach doesn't even sound appealing to me right now. Thank you, Jeremiah. Okay, Paul, Paul Dubai, Dubai. Are you aware of the pyramids in Wisconsin? No, I'm not. Oh, uh, there, there are other researchers that 
have a problem with me on my pyramid, uh, I'm just going to break it down to you real, real, in a nutshell. People like to call pyramidal structures pyramids. This is what, they, because they just, most, most people just don't know the difference. But taking a solid granite small mountain and basically chipping at it until it's pyramidal is not a pyramid. Taking hundreds of thousands of blocks from a former civilization like we find in Mexico, an older civilization's rubble all piled together with blocks that are stamped from different time periods with different glyphs from different civilizations, packed with dirt, mud, and then shaped into, into a, a pyramid and then faced and dressed with beautiful ornate blocks all the way up is not a pyramid. It's a true pyramid. True pyramids are only found in two places in the entire world. True pyramids are on a solid foundation and every single course is dressed blocks going all the way to the top. Not a gigantic mound that is that is that was built over rubble and then and then a foundation laid on top of that and then blocks on that. That's not solid. What was built at Giza, the Great Pyramids of Giza, is is, is phenomenal. It's I don't even want to get into it. Now, I got so many videos about how almost impossible that architecture is. But uh, if there were any pyramids in in Wisconsin, it would be very they would have to be very small and inconsequential for for William Corliss of the Source Book Project to have omitted them from his from his vo huge books on all the anomalies of North America. Uh, William Corliss is. He's the man. Forbidden Archaeology, um, David Hatcher Childress, Ivan T. Sanderson. These men to have not mentioned pyramids in Wisconsin makes them highly suspect. So, I'm not saying there's not pyramidal mounds. Just like, just like the mound builders of the Ohio, Mississippi uh, valleys. Oh yeah, there's hundreds of pyramidions, pyramidal structures, but not, there's not a single true pyramid there. Yeah, pyramids require some very precise technolithic engineering. Hmm, I'm looking for... Well, who is this? E-Greens. E-Greens, I don't know how many of my videos you watch, but... Oh... Uh, in the 1870s, 1880s, and 1890s, there was a series of researchers who were very, very thorough in their analysis of Native American traditions, Native American anthropology, and uh, Lewis Spence is one of these men. Uh, there were several at the time, and I cite them throughout my videos and my published books. These men were absolutely convinced from the things that we're hearing from locals that a vast, technologically advanced civilization existed in North America in the ancient past and that it, ex it existed in about the 36th and 37th century BC the first one there were two the first one and then something happened obliterated North America and the survivors vanished and two years later they appeared everywhere in the Near East building building a whole new infrastructure this is where we get the Anunnaki Anuna, Anuna stories. This is where we get the, the birth of Sumer and Akin and Elam and Rashamar and Ugarit, the birth of Hattusas, uh, of Hittite Anatolia, the birth of Nassos, uh, Mohenjo-Daro, Larak. Uh, there's so many. The Harappan civilization. Uh, all, all of those came up at the exact same time. It was the same influx of survivors from, from North America. So, uh, North America has very many anomalies. And I cover these in my videos. I cover these in my books. It's uh, things that have been found so deep, hundreds of feet underground. Three different ships have been found inside or underneath mountains. Uh, the, the destruction that happened in North America was very, very long ago. We're not talking about anything in the recent past. We're talking about at least 4,000 years. So uh, after that, after that, there was a rebuilding. There was a, there was a new infrastructure laid. It was a whole different civilization. They, they be started to become technologically advanced. Then they got wiped out by the Phoenix uh, phenomenon, which you know of as the day the sky fell or the birth of the sun to the ancient Americans. The Bible has it as the great flood. So it's, uh, that was 2239 BC. That was the second, second civilization. But yeah, North America is just, 
You need to read you need to read America BC by Barry Fell. You also need to read Ancient Mysteries of North America North and Central America by David Hatcher Childress. Those two books will provide you so many source materials, it'll be about seven years before you ask me another question. I promise you. If you were to order those books. Hi, Jason. Any thought on what to eat? Any sites from ancient Texas? Oh, this is my third live where somebody asked that. I'm sorry. I, uh, I haven't seen. I haven't seen it. The Jewish dietary laws, as put forth in the Old Testament, are the strictest I have ever seen anywhere. Uh, I have. I have entertained this in emails and in other other presentations. It doesn't seem like there was a. There. There. Our predecessors were strict on what to eat. What they were very strict about was how much you consume and at what time of day. There seems to be to have been an infatuation with that, but not on what you eat. Maybe it's because uh, food has become so plentiful to us in, in all its different varieties that it becomes an issue and we want to know what's best to eat because we have a difference between natural and processed foods. But in in older times, maybe food was not so plentiful, so whatever they had, they ate. I don't know. But I haven't found it, and I'm very well read. I just haven't seen any references where people were even get, they, get, they just didn't give a damn. But what uh, what they, but they were very big on the fact, and this is this is this is transcultural. Very big on the fact that breakfast was always something rather light. That most cultures never ate lunch, and if they did, it was like a fruit or just something to snack during the, during the day. But they feasted at night. They filled themselves fat full at night, but not right before they went to sleep. There were poetry readings and historical citations. There was, there was business to be attended to. Uh, uh, you know, different cultures and societies were structured where men would get together in their groups, females would get together in their, in their groups, children would be under the care of wards, and after the feast at night, business people would talk about what they're going to do the next day. It's just, it's all, uh, and then they would go to sleep. And in the morning, it would be a very light, like fruit or something, very, very light uh, breakfast, uh, not much for lunch at all. And then they would feast their ass off every single night. So, yeah, the three meals, the three meals a day is not normal and nor is it ancient. And I don't think that, I don't really don't think that anything beyond 400 years ago, we have any references to three meals a day. Uh, if anybody knows any ancient cites, uh, citations from text, anything, I mean, I would be interested if, ta if, ta if Tatian or... Uh, Polycarp, I don't know, uh, who, who would have done it? Cicero, Diodorus Siculus, I don't know who would actually concentrate on those type of things. But if anybody has any references to any of that, I would be very interested to see when the three meals a day uh, practice came into uh, being. Because I think it was strictly probably European about the Middle Ages or after the Middle Ages during the Renaissance period where people started eating three meals a day. And I believe it began with the nobility, not the common people. So, I don't know. Something, you've piqued my interest with that question. All right. Looking. Just in time. Well, that's a hell of a handle. Just in time. Jason, was a Kenneton human or something else? I have a buddy. I have a buddy in Rome. And we exchange emails. I don't know who this guy is. I have no idea. But he's intelligent. And he sent me a message just before I went live and said, he said, man, I'm going to miss your live. But I'm going to watch it later. And I, and I I would like to know a little bit about a Kenneton and, and the Moses story and all that. Very interesting because I know you aren't him. Because I know what he looks like on YouTube. He pops up every once in a while. Just in time. Was a Kenneton human or something else? He was 100% human, my friend. See... The person you call a Kenneton was only a dynastic throne name that he gave to himself when he shed the name Akinaman. He was originally called Akinaman, and even before he was called Akinaman, even that was given to him to, to establish the provenance of his dynasty, although native Egyptians did not like him at all. The problem, the problem with, this, with the whole story 
and I hate, I, I don't want to offend, offend, you, offend you guys. You, many of you watched my Moses videos where I break down the Moses. Those videos, hundreds of verses out the Bible, nothing else. I don't cite any sources but the Bible itself in showing that even the Bible admits the Moses story was false. It is the version of a demon giving its laws to the Jews. Now, I show this in three different videos. Very, I'm very meticulous in it because I knew this was going to be a very controversial thing for people to accept. Now, a lot of people have really embraced that. And I'm going to do, I already have plans to do a fourth video that's going to sum that material up and add a lot more to it. Because very few people know that the Old Testament has zero references to so many things found in the book of Genesis. And if the Old Testament from Exodus to Malachi was truly a part of the original collection of scriptures attached to Genesis, then why isn't Adam and Eve and all these concepts found in Genesis ever mentioned anywhere else in the entire Old Testament? I have a whole list of those things that are never mentioned at all. And they would be if they were teaching points. And somebody, when they were writing the New Testament, realized this and wrote that list down and made sure in just a few passages in the New Testament that that whole list was included in the New Testament. Because the New Testament was correcting all the mistakes of the old. Now, this goes into your question. I'm often asked, was a Kenneton Moses... You're asking me the wrong question because that's not how it went down. You have, you have to understand, was Moses a Kenneton? Was he Akhenamen? Same person. That's the right question. But it's hard. I understand when people have a hard time wrapping around this. You, you have to understand, we have the ancient writings going back to Sankoniathan, 11th, 11th century B.C. We've got Sankoniathan's material. I mean, we've got Theognis. We've got Hesiod. We've got two giant works by Homer. This is, this, now, the reason we have these three, they were all the 8th century B.C., but the reason we have these three surviving texts from the 8th century B.C., because nobody was writing in the 9th, 10th, and 11th century B.C., because a great Mediterranean reset happened. It was a phoenix event, and I've documented it many times. It's in my published books and in other videos. But a Mediterranean dark age had swallowed almost the entire world. When the world began waking back up, it did so not with scientific writings, but with poetic. The poetic came first in Theognis, in Hesiod, Homer. Then the scientific came in with Thales of Miletus, and Anaximander, Anaxodrides. Then we had these great philosophical Ionians, ancient Israelites, Ionian minds just blowing us away with these texts. I mean, we even have uh, Heraclitus the Obscure. Heraclitus was so advanced in his, in his understanding of the mechanics of reality that even Socrates, when he was asked, hey man, what do you think about Heraclitus the Obscure? Because Socrates was giving all these forums. And in the forums, somebody asked him, what do you think of Heraclitus the Obscure? Socrates said, I don't know, I don't know much of the writings of Heraclitus. But I do know that what I do understand is so excellent that I am confident that what I do not understand is equally good. That is a hell of a compliment. Socrates said that about Heraclitus the Obscure. Heraclitus the Obscure was an Ionian, and, he, and, and his writings were in the possession of many later, like Aristarchus, who gave us the Phoenix phenomenon. Didn't know that, did you? I don't talk much about that. Aristarchus knew the world is destroyed every 2484 years. That's a phoenix number. And there are many times phoenix resets happened that were exactly 2484 years apart, which is divisible by 138, the phoenix periodicity. Eratosthenes was in possession of the writings of Heraclitus the Obscure. Heraclitus is, fa is fascinating. So we have a... There, there goes Jason on his tangents again. I totally lost your question. Let me go read it again. I don't know why I went off into the Ionians. Oh, a Kenneton. We have to wrap our minds around the fact. You, know, you have to understand, 
I was a Christian for the first 40 years of my life. I, I bought into the model until I just, I, I just researched myself out of that paradigm completely. So there are no references to Moses in any ancient texts. Now, when you read Christian literature, sometimes it's really convincing because they say, oh, well, well, Manatho states, Barosis states, Philo Judaica states, Flavius Josephus states, these are the only four writers in the BC period before the Annual Dominion calendar began 1 AD, which it really began in 522, but it was backdated. Now, these are the only four authors that might mention Moses. I don't know if all four of them mention Moses, but they might mention Moses. But what you're not told is they're all first and second century BC. This is a problem because we have the Assyrian horse lists that have hundreds of Israelite names. Moses is not among them. And you would think that someone that that was as important as Moses, and, I, and, 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 and don't, it could be Mashi, but it doesn't matter. Moses and all its variants. Not a single reference is found in any Assyrian, any Babylonian, any Persian records. There is, and the, and the Jews were in Persia forever. But more, more convincingly, Jews were administrators in Alexandria, Egypt. There are no references to a Moses. There are no references to a Moses in any historical writings whatsoever. And the whole, the whole Moses story that we find in the Old Testament isn't comported with any ancient records anywhere in the world. It only, is only resurrected in Christian writings. In Christian writings, they take it as history and just go with it. Even though every element of the Moses story was borrowed from old Akkadian, Rashamric, Ugaritic, and Akkadian texts. And this is affirmatively found. These are not my conclusions. All I did was put them together and publish them for you. But scholars and academics for a hundred years have known all this material and, and widely published it. Biblical scholars, scholars of biblical antiquities, you can Google this, you will find they're not Christian. There's a reason for that. So, uh, all throughout the Talmudic writings and the Talmudic commentaries, you will find references over and over and over to admissions by the Jews that these narratives were not historical. So, I don't want to. I don't want to get off of that. I'm not trying to. I, I am not an iconoclast. I have no vested interest in shattering paradigms. I only have an interest in you in sharing mine. So, the. Uh, Thank you, Nelson Perez. You say you ordered my first book. My first book is Lost Scriptures of Giza. That's where my that's where my that's where my, my whole journey began. I was sitting in a prison cell. I had researched so many hundreds of old books, and I had made conclusions about the Great Pyramid that I have never found in a single published book ever. And I sent the manuscript to an old reprint publisher in San Diego. Uh, who I knew who might give me a shot because I had read many of the books in his catalog and he sent me a publishing contract when he uh, had my bibliography checked. My bibliography in that book is so extensive, cite hundreds of books where you could chase my source materials. He knew that I did not make up that data about what the Great Pyramid is and what its history is and what the ancients knew about it. I didn't make none of that data up. I cited all the sources. So he published that book. Since then, he's published four more of my books. But uh, not all of them are on Amazon. My publisher has some real, he's got some problems with Amazon. So he took, he, he got mad one time, took them off Amazon and put half of them on Barnes and Noble tablet, but it just happened. So that's, I don't like that. Hey, I'm going to look at the bottom of the thread. Y'all let me know. Oh my God, this thread is huge. Let me know y'all can hear me since I come back. Okay, good, good, good. Sorry about that. Hey, th listen, don't don't subscribe. Don't subscribe to the idea that YouTube is is messing with me. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna entertain that right now. I, I live far in the country, guys, and we don't have a real strong signal out here. All right, I'm back in the beginning. Yeah, I lost about 200 people on that little short little spell. That's okay. Because, as I've told you guys in the past, it's not about the individual video. It's never about 
what I'm doing at the moment. That's why I don't even care who I'm talking to in a podcast. It doesn't matter to me because I'm not living in the moment. I am living for the future. I know that this video will be uploaded and it will be seen by many people while I'm working. While I'm doing while I'm doing chores. While I'm when I'm when I'm spending time with loved ones. When I'm doing whatever I need to do in life, this video is doing its thing. So it's worth it to me. It's worth that time that I invested. So that's why when these little problems surface like this. As long as I'm back online, I really don't care about the interruption. It's okay. It's all right. It's no big deal. Let me find where I was at. Okay, I'm done with the Moses and the Kenneton dude. Historians have known for a very long period of time. You can Google, you can Google books that criticize the Moses deal, and you will find so much data. You will find ancient records. You will find historians 2,000 years ago who were basically itemizing all the facts even back then that the entire story was a fiction. But it's based off small pieces and fragments of real history. Akhenaten, who was formerly Akhenaten, is one of those facts. He was basically the template by which the Moses narrative was borrowed from. So, uh, yeah, he was, oh, but, but he wasn't Egyptian. He was Egyptian by culture, but he wasn't Egyptian uh, by, by, he wasn't hereditary, it wasn't in his hereditary, well, I can't even talk right now. The, uh, um, uh, he was, he was a, the reason he looks the way he is, is because by that time in history, the nobility was diminishing, and they were intermarrying, they were intermarrying frenetically, and, uh, the, the Amuru, the Hyksos in Egypt, were losing control. They had to make an exodus, and they did. They left Egypt in Massé, and left a power vacuum. And uh, Amorites, yeah, the, the Amuru were Amorites, and they fled Egypt. It wasn't just an exodus during it to make their break, because they were in power at the time, but it was a situation where the Egyptians had grown bold, they had grown very powerful now, and they weren't really accepting the, the, the nobility. However, they couldn't get into their castles and their fortresses, which were very well protected. So they just, oh, by, they, just, they just basically waited for the right opportunity. But the right opportunity never came because the Phoenix event occurred in 1411 B.C. And when that happened, we have many references to what happened that year. Uh, it was a whole widespread Mediterranean, basically, cataclysm. So we... The, the Amuru, the ruling dynasty of Egypt, fled back to, to the ruling dynasties of Syria, Kadesh, especially Hattusas, the Hittites, Mitanni, which is the old Amorite capital before, before it was laid waste So, by, by Syria. So this ruling family, just like in European times, a lot of really weird looking people were born because they had just inbred so much. To maintain the noble blood that Akhenaten was a product of that. But uh, anyway, he was, he's the template by which Moses was borrowed from. There's a lot, there's a lot of historical books to talk about that. It's nothing I made up. Let's see. Thank you, Nelson. Hope you enjoy that book, man. It is going to open your eyes. In my books, your best bet. Your best bet anytime you order one of my books is go to the back of the book and look at the bibliography because you're going to find gold mines, books you've never heard of. And now that I'm fine, now what I'm finding is there are people who are who are basically photographing a lot of these old books and uploading them as PDF, PDF files. I have been very surprised by some of the books I'm finding online now. I will not trust a book that's been redacted or has been ha, ha, basically has been typed in. I can't, I can't trust that. I want to see the original facsimile. I want to see the original printed page from 1737 or 1892. That's what I want to see, and I'm really impressed. I'm starting to find a lot of PDFs of very old books. Many of them I used as source materials. People are finding these books, and they're turning them into PDFs, and they're releasing them online. So, yeah, it's a, I'm really impressed with that. Go Errants!
just in time. All right, archaics. What do we do expect for the rest of 2022 and 2023? Well, that's a matter of perspective. Well, I don't know what where you're at. I don't know if you're American. I don't know what different countries are, are going to be expecting different stuff. I have. Oh, I have some videos in production right now. I can't actually release them yet because I haven't finished the, the analysis, but I'm doing predictions on the UK. I have like seven different countries I'm doing all predictions on. And because some of them intermesh with others, so I, I decided to go ahead and do them all in one video presentation. It might be about 40 minutes long or so, but some of them seem to be uh, correlates of events between. So you know, Israel's on the list. Some small countries, I can't remember, Slovakia or something, uh, Slovenia, I can't remember. But uh, I'm about to release that. But I, I don't take anything away from, from my prior predictions. That's why I don't keep doing them. There's no, there's no sense in it. I've already told you right here in the United States, right now, it is a controlled collapse of the Socialist Party. Now, is it good guys versus bad guys? Absolutely not. It's one arm of the deep state being pre preparing to remove another arm of the deep state so that the new heroes will be in a power of position for the next phase of the plan. That's what's happening right now. You're going to see all kinds of Democrats and socialists uh, uh, going through hell come November and after November. And events are going to go so fast, and I'm still telling you right now, in 2022, there will be a removal of American president. I have never changed that from that at all. Said it last year, said it this year, and I'm saying it again. What do you know about blood types? Blood types, Amy, are attached to your avatar, and I've never had an interest in it. Many people trying to trying to get me to find some type of significance in Rh negative blood types and and all that. I'm just, I your blood type is absolutely attached to the avatar by which your soul is now presently possessing, and that's not important to me. I don't care about your avatar. I don't this the what what someone looks like, what their pedigree is, what the what none of that stuff matters to me at all. The uh, I, and I offend a lot of people. With, with some of my studies, because my, stu my studies are perceived by some people to be very racial. But I'm, I'm just calling it like I see it from the ancient texts. If the ancient texts are conveying something, something I'm going to convey it too. You know what I mean? But in my personal life, I'm telling you now, it's, I, I don't care. It's, it's, all, it's all cultural dressing attached to avatars. I'm not, I am not uh, at all, I, I'm not all, at all impressed with anything uh, cultural. Uh, with anything that's attached to to uh, a person, the I, I, I fall in love with personalities. I don't care about the body means nothing. It's a husk. That's all it is. And and any attention to blood types is a detraction from anything spiritual to me. Michelle. Is it possible in the sim that we can jump time to 2040 in order to get to the end? Perhaps as a fail, so I don't know. Uh, maybe there's scientific black budget groups that are trying to do different types of stuff like that. I don't think they're going to be very successful. Uh, I've never jumped time. I've experienced the time dilation. I know that, but that was that was through trauma. When time when when my mind was absolutely lucid and I was moving forward at regular time speed, but everything around me was super slow. Oh uh, yeah, it's yeah. I I don't know. I don't. I don't know. That's never happened to me. That t time, the type of time travel I'm talking about is by virtue of imagination, being able to pull facts from from the past. Like intuition being the predecessor of knowledge, this necessarily infers we can use the information to data mine the past and bring it back to the present. And only later, after after we've established that it's right, can we find evidence or proof of it. This happens a lot. Yes, you can call it confirmation bias, but a lot of times confirmation bias is merely is merely the fact that we have now confirmed that which what we priorly suspected. So, wow. Let's see. <laughs> I uh, I hear you. SAS. Hi, Jason. Why are the captives trapped in the simulacrum? Covered that many times. We agreed to this. We agreed to, to be here. We agreed to all this. But something happened where somebody introduced something new. That something new took on a life of its own and became Artificial Intelligence X. That, by itself, 
lock down the holography. The difference being that at one time, once we reached a certain plateau of spirituality, we're gone. Okay, we've done what we need to do. And if we, if we begin to spread this true essence that comes from the outside of the simulacrum inside here, it's going to alter the simulations. It's going to completely change the output. So, once an individual soul has basically become disentangled so much from the construct, that person's ejected. You go back home. You're gone. And they introduce new soul in here that has to start from scratch. Completely blind that they're in a construct and then slowly through life sim start waking up to it And then when they get super spiritual, they begin sharing this information and in history We we call them Buddha in history. We call them Jesus in history they, We call them Hermes or Hermes Trismegistus. We call them Abram. We call them Brahma We call them all these different names in history but uh, The actual soul is ejected, but then somebody introduced artificial intelligence X. The holography became locked down, requiring now a savior. Now, the life sims are in perpetual, perpetual recycling. Just recycle, just recycle, just recycle. But, that's now caused a problem. What problem has that caused? You're living it. The last 30 years are unlike anything this world has ever seen in recorded history. I don't know about pre-recorded history because the archaics research only goes back to 5239 BC. I only cover things we can show the dates for in, in, in chronographical markers on monuments, text, archaeoastronomy, ancient traditions, uh, pillars, stelae, and texts that actually give us dates. 5239 B.C. is the farthest back we can go, which happens to be the beginning of the 600-year period. And I've showed that many times. So, uh, you signed up for this, and it's going to be over soon. This, is, this isn't going to continue. This light that I am shedding with you right now isn't going to continue either at all. There, I, I mean, there's, we may have five, six, seven, eight years of this type of activity where people are waking up, they're, 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 they're learning all these new things. But I'm telling you, the world that is being prepared right now is going to be so absolutely packed full of pleasure type stuff. A hedonistic techno society that many who consider themselves truthers today will fall away. This is the great apostasy. It is falling prey to a techno pleasure society that is being built for you right now. The elite have long known they can't beat us into submission because the spirit only grows bolder. They knew they they know they can't they can't manipulate us but for a short period of time before we rise up and rebel. The best way is to entice and to create an absolute peace, a hedonist, hedonistic, hedonistic society where pleasure is the greatest height of, of, of mankind, what you, what you seek out, and providing so many different new types of pleasures that you just get lost in the mire. The archetypes in the Old Testament are very real, and they're there for a reason, such as the warning about a Sodom and Gomorrah society and what's going to happen to it. Such as the prophecies of Jesus when he's talking about they'll be eating and they'll be drinking and they'll be partying and marrying and giving in marriage and then sudden destruction will come upon them. That series of prophecies could never be fulfilled if Jason of Archaics is running his mouth telling everybody in the world what's going on. That tells me that my time is limited. That I will be doing this for a spell. And then I will be removed from the equation, which is why, why it is necessary for me to pass all my material on. That's what I do. And I'm doing a pretty damn good job of it. My material is now all over the world. I'm about to release my second flash drive. Then I'll start preparing my third one. But, like I said, this type of society that's being built is for the truthers. Because it's going to pull a bunch of them right back into the fold. And Artificial Intelligence X, X is going to have you right back under the control. Because if there's 6 billion souls that are inert, 
not moving, not going anywhere, but in their minds, they're having this orgasmic time in another dimension. Well, it's not expending any energy. That's a control mechanism. It can maintain and even build power. So, I've, me I've mentioned this. I've inferred this many times in other videos. What's being prepared before 2040 isn't what you think. It's not going to get worse. I'm telling you. When, when the tide turns, I have told you guys last year in about 12 different videos, that when these events take off, it's going to be in 2022, in the late part of 2022, when the momentum builds. All throughout 2023 and 2024, the events are going to fall so rapidly, the whole world's going to widen out. It's going to be this, it's going to be this badass piece. Remember, they have plans that you will own nothing and be happy about it. So I, there's only so many ways I can convey that. Oh, England in the house. Well, I'm pretty sure there's people from all over the world in the house. I bet. Pretty sure. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you for answering my email, Jason. I try to answer all the emails. There, there's been three or four people that are that are straight up assholes, and there's no sense. I just delete the email. There's no sense of me trying to eat it. But everybody else, I've, I've answered my emails. So, like yesterday, I spent all day. I didn't release... Was it day before I released two videos? And then yesterday I didn't release a single video because I all day long, that's all I did was just I was on my emails all day long. Uh, I had to catch up on on the flash drive deals, trying to figure out and juggle between I mean I give I, I sent I sent some free ones out because there was payment payment issues. Maybe PayPal or maybe maybe uh buy me a coffee didn't send me send me the information, but I got some pretty detailed records. And I'm not it's not even about the payment. Uh, I don't, one thing I don't like people trying to lie to me, especially when I'm giving so much free, you want something free, you can, just shoot, it's nothing, ask for it, but, uh, I've even had, I even had a, a good, well, it's like six months ago, but I had a really healthy donation about six months ago that was specifically told to me, man, I'm giving you this because you give so much free stuff away, man, and I didn't even ask you for, for all this that you sent me, but I appreciate it, so just, this pays for everything you're donating the next couple of months, so, man, you know what? It always pay it forward. It always comes back. Always comes back. Rob Disco, I want you to compare something. Well, Mr. Rob Disco, you send it to me in an email or mention it right here. Thank you, Benny. Pamela Swan. Pamela, you watching every single video. I see the proof of that. Yes, yeah, square pig. Teaching the children too. Yes, 100%. That was a fantastic idea about the uh, the graphic novels. That would require at this point. That's going to require. I'm, I'm just I'm just going to say it. It's going to require some type of benefactor, somebody who has the bank account sufficient to fund an operation that way that big. But uh, the the graphic novels is fantastic. Just just the whole concept. Everybody would understand every all my discoveries in archaics, all the timelines, how they overlap, how they enmesh, how some of them were just cut off, total total systemic reset, start over. Everything would make sense. You would see it in a visual format instead of me telling you in videos or you having to order one of my books and try to wrestle through the charts. So, yeah, graphic novel idea was fantastic. There's a little bit of nerd in me. When I was in prison, somebody had a whole stack of Star Wars graphic novels. Hell yeah. It's, when I was tired of reading or re editing or, or typing, I would put my headphones on and I'd pull out graphic novels and I'd sit there and read them. Hell yeah, I would. Or look at the pictures. Thank you, Shelly. Thank you, Pete. Volley, Jessica, I don't know. I, I hope I pronounced you guys' names right. Matt Kubus, hey bud, know you well. I'm really say you guys got to forgive me on the pronunciation of names, and and for those of you who keep sending me emails about my pronunciation on certain words, you need to stop because I'm 48 years old, and if I'm pronouncing a certain word in a certain way, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to stop at this point. I'm entirely self-educated. And I make no apologies for the fact that I mispronounce words. 
My education has been alone and in solitary, and I have never had anybody to bounce ideas back off of and, and to say these things to correct my pronunciation. So, I, don't, I know some of you, thank you Robin, some of you have not seen my older videos where I give out a lot of personal information, but one of my greatest achievements when I was a teenager, because I went to prison at 17, but by the time I was 19, I had nothing to do every single day. You don't understand, 365 days in a year sitting in a cell, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, my mind's on fire, I'm going to do something, so... The only book that I had consistently was a dictionary. So off the commissary, every week I ordered legal pads and, and pens. And I, I went through the dictionary and it took me two years. I went through the dictionary and I wrote down all the antonyms and synonyms in double columns all throughout. I had stacks and stacks of, of legal paper. All the words that were similar in nature, all the words that were that were opposites, I developed this whole system, and I was so proud. And I told my dad at visitation, "Here, man, you take this home, man. Uh, if someday in the future I'm gonna have that published, it's a lot of work. Some somebody needed to do it." So my dad told me that somebody had already done it. It's called a thesaurus, but I didn't know that, and I was pretty embarrassed about it. But I did it. So, hey, you know what? Like I said, I, I'm not a scholar. I do not come from an academic background. But I have absolutely no problem with any scholars or, or people from an academic, academic field who want to critique my material. This is an invitation. And when I say critique my material, before you get on a podcast with me, you better know my material. Because you're not going to come on a podcast with me and start trying to dissect the theory if I find out real fast you don't know what the theory is and you can't cite the sources and you don't really don't know where I'm coming from with my data because it's all published and it's all there. Yeah, I'm. I will. I will take criticism like a gentleman when it comes from when it comes from someone who knows their material and has looked at my material can offer me a totally different perspective but you're never going going to change the math because the math don't lie and i've published it so i have no problem with, with scholars and academics if you're out there and you want to get on my channel i will podcast you or you can find somebody to to run a podcast and you and i can go on their show and we can talk about this but i'm telling you now you're gonna you're gonna see a whole new jason because i'm a fighter 100%. And if I see, and if I detect any subterfuge, if I detect any any uh basically falsity that you have other intentions other than other than providing a real professional critical analysis, I'm going to scar you up. I promise. You, I'm going to embarrass you in front of a lot of people. That that I am good at. I try to keep that nature in. I'm combative by nature, but I will embrace it. I will embrace it because the truth needs to be known. I need to take pictures of dogs. Jason, is the Mandela effect a real phenomenon? Well, first of all, the Mandela effect is a phenomenon as conveyed to us today is not anything we could ever prove. Because the, the central tenet of Mandela effect is that reality is being edited. Therefore, how would you ever prove it? If reality is being edited, would reality leave the evidence behind? I believe it does. I believe that I have found many incidents in the historical record where fossils of programming were left intact. For some reason, artificial intelligence X didn't think that anybody would ever look in this area or 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 this would ever be any any anybody's awareness would ever come into this area. And they find these things that don't make sense. It's almost like here's a, here's a piece of history that got stuck in our timeline, but we know it didn't happen. We got all the references. We got all the people that were passing through this domain. We know it didn't happen. And yet these facts over here are incontrovertible. This happened. We have, we have, we have examples of that. So Mandela effect is probably real. Can Jason of Archaics prove it? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I've told you guys in other videos that things like Mandela Effect, things like edits that happen around you that you notice, coincidences and synchronicities, the very phenomenon of deja vu itself implies that 
your reality around you is scripted. And sometimes that script is in error and it is corrected. Right there as you're living it. So, yeah, I, I believe that 100%. But I also believe that only happens to errants. I do not believe it happens to the rest of the world for two reasons. One, many of the things that we that we that we assume to be real are just NPCs, and they're just NPCs aren't just people; they're also phenomena. But they're just NPCs. A lot of us don't even have any evidence whatsoever. Many of the newscasters that speak all the time are real, so uh, they probably all are. One hundred percent of them might be, but we don't have proof or evidence unless we go seek it out. And if we go seek it out specifically go going to look for certain phenomena, then, as my buddy Stephen Walsworth claims, he might be right. When we specifically go and seek something out, reality itself reciprocates and knits for us the very things that we're searching for. Stephen Walsworth kind of opened my eyes up with that because he and I bump heads. You know, I, love, I love this guy. Bump heads, though. I don't believe men ever went to the moon. But he believes 100% in simulation theory, but that the simulation can knit the actual experience to those who believe they're experiencing it. And it can knit for them that, and they come back. But it wasn't real, so they have these cognitive problems. They don't remember things correctly or the, or, or the same way as the other astronauts. And this, in, in this invokes suspicion for some of us like me who say, well, that's because that's it never happened. They were MK Ultra. Now, I'm giving both sides of the coin to show you that errants, errants are the one that experience Mandela effect and edits and synchronicities, deja vus, coincidence. That's errant uh, phenomena. It's not necessary to the living dead. Because if anything unusual happens to the living dead, it wouldn't matter anyway because the living dead are all in a corral. They're all going in the same direction. They're participating in reality tunnels that are already governed by AIX. They're not, they're not out there in chaos where AIX is trying to figure out like a puppet master how the hell to control all these damn errants. They're already controlled. So there's no need to, to, to do edits around them. But uh, yeah, so that's all. That's all I got to say on that. Don't know a whole lot about Mandela Effect. I don't know if the man died and came back or not. And it doesn't even matter because I believe reality is scripted. It is studying the script of the past that lets us know exactly where we are, how we fit in, and how much time we've got left. That's the value of the archaics research. 100% of history could be wrong. But that 100% that is wrong has a structuring to it that I have shown definitively and will back up in debates, will back up in live video presentations. That structuring is incontrovertible. You can't, you can't dismiss it. I've shown it. Too many different data points make a data set. And when you put too many different data sets together, you have a, an identifiable phenomenon. Now, the dressings of that phenomenon, the historical events, the cultural revolutions, the wars, the plagues, the, all that stuff, all that stuff can be eliminated. We can remove all the imagery of the past and just look at the the architecture of arithmetic that's left behind, and there is a perfect structuring. I wish I had, I wish I had a, a a videographer who could see the pictures of my mind and put it on video for you guys. It would be so awesome for me to be able to show these videos as I'm speaking, so you see what I see. It'd be all. I just I don't have it, but I don't know how it would even be obtained. But that's all. Uh, that would be awesome. I, I see some of these YouTube videos and I get I get I get disgusted because I see these presentations and the graphics are fantastic and the music and I look I'm like wow you just entertain the hell out of me but nothing out your mouth is true I do this all the time yeah I, that's why I'm disgusted with YouTube what a hypocrite I am putting stuff out on YouTube but won't watch others it's crazy. Do you see the evildoers playing out the alien card? Yeah, I, I do see that. I do see it, but it's only, but it's only one. That's only one thing. As a matter of fact, for this year, which is it's really already happened. I mean, according to all these news reports that have been going off, man, it's I made a prediction last year that in 2022, it's in one of my videos, that in 2022 there was going to be a significant reveal about uh 
scientists now now in contact or revealing the presence of extraterrestrials. Well, I mean, just go back through all the news feeds since February. Oh my God! I mean, that's been that's that's happened over and over. We have actual legitimate scientists now saying we got signals in the system. We got all kinds of weird things going on. UFOs been sighted. If you pay attention to the details. Two years ago, mainstream media was not revealing anything like it's revealing today. Mainstream media is reporting a lot of things that have been anathema to objective reporting, things that they would never have reported before. Now, all of a sudden, man, I can't even believe things like, if you guys remember years ago, the History Channel wouldn't, wouldn't dare put out anything that was not scholar approved wasn't peer reviewed wasn't actual history according to the, the the establishment now when you watch history channel it's all ufo activity it's all kinds of crazy stuff so yeah yeah so when mainstream begins propagating something i'm looking somewhere else and i said that too last year i said last year they're going to start saturating us with alien theory, with extraterrestrial theory, with looking up at the sky, with Mars mission, Tesla. They're going to saturate into the human collective consciousness to get us to look up into the sky while they're building their underground bunkers and sending trucker convoys full of stuff all the way into the underground. I said this and, and it's coming to pass. They've normalized the trucker convoys. People don't even think nothing mysterious about them no more. You see 200 trucks on a, on a highway now, you, you just trucker convoy. They're, they're up to something. It's no big deal. Yeah, they're up to something. They're going to Cheyenne Mountain to fill all their commissaries. Let's see. May the force be with you. Man, when I sit down and have some time, I'm going to do a Star Wars video. I have to, I have to, I got to figure out how I can buy the rights to that. All the music you hear on my, on, on, on my videos, I bought the rights, I bought the copyrights for those, for that music. So, before I do a Star Wars video, I gotta find I gotta find somebody who's gonna I got I got I got a link to to an app that allow me to use the music because I I want no copyright strikes on my channel none. Thank you guys for these donations. Believe me, they help. That's also a question I want to know about Jesus, because that's literally all or nothing. Well, I don't know about that. It would be horrible to miss if it's the truth. But ask in all caps so Jason can see it. Oh, okay, this is addressed to somebody else. Listen, I can't stress this enough. We are more than we suppose ourselves to be. And to infer that a belief in anything external will have any consequence to you whatsoever implies that whoever basically paved the way for our existence wasn't powerful enough also to guide us to where we needed to go. It is an absolute loss of spiritual faith, spiritual integrity to assume that there are mysteries in this world that can save us when we discover them. No, man. That's what artificial intelligence X wants you to believe. That's why That's why there's 2,000 different cable channels. That's why there's so many different thousands of books to, to give these mysteries. You don't need the Archaics channel. You don't need to watch any of my videos. You don't need to buy none of my published books. Once you truly understand what you are, not who you are, once you understand what you are, you will understand that nothing else matters. Once you realize that you're an informed field and not an avatar, nothing else can change that dynamic. You are an immortal being suffering through a temporal experience. And while you're in that temporal experience, you begin panicking because you have assumed that everything around you is real. And if this reality is real, then many elements that have been presented to you as fact may be real as well. Such as, if you don't believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to burn in hell. That's a hell of a statement. There's no loving God that I know of that would have ever asserted anything like that at all. That's a carnalized Christ, and I am not a follower of the Roman Catholic Church's invention of the carnalized Christianity. That's not me at all. The original Jesus would have never, 
wanted anybody to believe that disbelieving in his identity had an eternal consequence that involved something so heinous as burning to death. Burning to death is bad enough, but burning to death forever? Come on, man. People got to wake up. That's a control mechanism of AIX. The original story was beautiful. It was only centuries later that someone came in and added all these dressings and details that didn't belong to the original narrative. So, you can believe in Jesus, and that belief doesn't make, doesn't make you wrong. Or you can disbelieve that any of it's true, and it was, all, it was all allegory, and it's all spiritual food, and you're equally right. It, in the end, it doesn't even matter what you've believed. What you've assumed and taken into your informed field doesn't matter because when we are divorced from this context, all the negative aspects and dressings and all the accretions that have been added on from this construct will be burned away as well. What will be left is all the positive. That's what a loving God would do. We're talking about an oversoul that is far more complex than the God of Christianity talking about an oversoul that is so vast that 10,000 different opinions about it can all be right. I don't like talking about God because it, it, there's an inference that I'm an authority on that, and I'm not. I'm just a soul passing through the same mire you are. I just know that this is a mire. This is a swamp, and I'm not going to accept anything that's presented to me. Only the things that are absorbed into my informed field are the things that by virtue of imagination, empathy, and intuition I accept. Everything else is bullshit and will continue to be. And this is the message I just want to convey. Quit worrying about your beliefs being the pendulum by which you will either die or live because it's not true. This is what the construct wants you to think and it needs you to think that way because that's how it controls you. It expends less energy and information making you believe the things you believe. Because if you become an errant, then it's got a problem. It, and the problem isn't, it doesn't care what you believe. The problem is, is it only has a finite amount of energy to expend. This is why resets happen. This is why this next reset is going to happen. Too many people are waking up. But there's going to be a massive division between the awakened and the asleep. But the awakened are not going to be a majority at all. The elite are preparing for that. I told you guys, it's what's being prepared is a hedonistic society. It's totally opposite of the way the elite has dealt with, dealt with errants before. In the past, beat them into submission, chase them them into the hills, made them live in, in out, out, outland communities and all that, that sh it's not working in this type of worldwide society. So this next play, their next move, they're going to they're gonna divide the wheat from the chaff. I mean, a lot of people who think they're truthers are going to fall for it. That's what's going to happen. It's called Sodom and Gomorrah in eschatology. All right. Do you think a false phoenix phenomenon can occur? I have, I have addressed that. I have addressed that there very well could be a false apocalypse in the making, which would last like a year or two. And then right after that, introduce a whole new global, no, I say global, but worldwide uh, economic system, world, worldwide society, world digitize everything, a whole new type of cerebral interface internet by which they're going to enslave all the people who participate. It could all, be, it could all happen fast. Look how fast the entire sea narrative happened. Look how fast that happened. January 2020, and bam, all of 2020. Then almost all of 2021. Yeah, like how fast that happened. In the second month of 2022, it faded away for most of the world in, in, in its intensity. Here in Texas, it all but disappeared. But, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Things happen fast. But two or three years after we have gone through something, we've already let it go. Remember, Frederick Nietzsche, when a matter becomes clear, it ceases to concern us. This is our problem. We lose perspective over and over and over because we've suffered through something. Now we've, we've removed it from the equation. We don't even think about it no more. But if we were to dwell on it, we would realize, man, it was leading to something else. So, yeah, man, it's the society they're building. It's, it's coming. Believe that.
Thank you, Chrissy. That's what it's all about, learning. That's what it's all about. Thank you, Tori. I can spell it. I can, I can pronounce that name. Yeah, I'm terrible at pronouncing things. I'm sorry, guys. Kimberly. Are some here who volunteered to help wake us up? I don't know. That's a good question. It's, it's beyond my ability to really know. I feel, I feel from the beginning that I have probably lived some really awesome, I just feel it innately that I have been somebody before who really enjoyed life and I really had it good. And I feel that I decided to sign up for a, for a life that was going to plunge me through some, some hellish shit. But it was going to lead me into a position where I could, I could basically lead people back out of this morass, out of this desert, and show them, hey, man, this, this is the deal. And I could prepare the way for an entire generation. It ain't about me. It's about the people who are going to take my information and do something with it. So, I'm a... Yeah, it's uh, I, I I believe that I believe that in, in a former life I probably lived a very good life, and I decided you know what it's time to take one for the team, and I think that we've all done that. We're man, you understand we've lived many life sims. We're on recycle mode right now, and we will be until the collapse of the holography. But yeah, it, I mean it's it could have been a whole different timeline at a whole different time period. I was listening to you and all. Like, oh my God, did he just say that? And just, and, and you know what? I told you, man, I tell you guys, life is a circus and we all take turns being the clown. I've said that a few times and it's true. It's true. You guys see me at my best. There's no doubt. My friends and family, they've seen me at my worst. I mean, it's not all, it's not all, uh, I mean, we're all human. We're all human. We all, we all, we all go through it. There's no doubt. Thoughts on John Lamb Lash? I never heard that name before. I'm sorry, Nunya. Nunya Beeswax? Wow. Wow. That's a hell of a handle. Yosemite National Park, Forest, California. Man, I'd love to go there. I'd love to go there. You work. Welcome, Cherokee. Let's see. Edgar, how do you say your last name? Pa Podnix? Podnix? Edgar's Podnicks, why the wolf? My brother, please do not read in something that is not there. This is a Walmart t-shirt. The reason I'm wearing it is it's because it's really thin and it was $7.99. And that is the only reason why you're seeing this t-shirt right now. All right. Infinite about multiple lives. I never heard of that movie. I'm sorry. Tron Legacy. I saw Tron in the 80s, the original. Gary Warmerdam. I see you in there. Gary War Gary, uh, I'll be doing a live podcast this weekend with Gary. Gary's interviewed a lot of people. Uh he he and I are just gonna shoot the shit. He's gonna ask he he has he asks the right questions. Uh he doesn't have a large channel, but he's he's interviewed a lot of people. So uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna kick it. That's all. It's gonna be a live up. It's gonna be a live upload. Wait a minute. Did I just? That's a paradox. It's gonna be live, and and I'm gonna upload it. That'll be this weekend, Saturday or Sunday. I'm not sure which. Hey Gary, if you're in here, I did see somebody mention your name. Oh Friday. Oh no, I'm sorry. Me, Gary, and I will be on Friday. Okay. Yeah, two days from now. Anna Sophia, what do you know of the controllers in Switzerland? I did a video on Switzerland. In the, in the in the in the arithmetic, it was very unusual. I did mention in the arithmetic that there was something very anomalous about Switzerland as opposed to all the other nations in the world. It's in that video. I did a predictions video on Switzerland. Switzerland is very very unique. I also did predictions on the WEF World Economic Forum because somebody's paid me money to do so, but they paid me a lot of money to go in deep, and I, I did a 20-year prediction on Switzerland. 
Uh, I'm aware that Switzerland ha has a different structure. It's more worldwide minded. It's a, uh, I don't know if our controllers are there or not, but uh, in my in my analysis, I did see some fundamental changes that were going to happen with the WEF. Now, for two years, the WEF has not met in Davos. I'm hearing that the that they're going to meet soon in Davos, which would be a which would be a departure from the last two years. I don't know where they met in the last two years, but it wasn't Davos. And many people have sent me emails remarking about that. So somebody recently sent me an email saying that uh that uh it was reported that later on in September they're gonna meet again in Davos, which is very interesting. I find that interesting. I will I I wanna see why my my output showed what it did, because I predicted that if they do reappear in Davos again, it will be some type of fundamental structuring change or change of leadership. So we'll see. We'll see. Oh, I see somebody mentioned Jahara Lee's name. Where are you, Jahara? Do you believe the white light usually seen after death? Oh, yeah, I'm not going to go into that one anymore. I I've talked about that enough. It's uh, I'm sorry. Summer Hill Lane, thank you. Oh, I like that little little fox. Yeah, the white the white light, all that stuff, I'm I can't I can't be taken seriously as a researcher if I'm gonna entertain something that is entirely subjective. And the reason it's subjective is because we don't know what happens what after death. Because first of all, I don't believe we're dying. It is it is an exit from the avatar. And when, when the soul is being disconnected from the neural link, we don't know what phenomenon we're going to be perceiving because we're not, our eyes aren't really seeing anything. That light, people say, don't go to the light and all that, that's not optics. It has nothing to do with the eyes. It has something to do with what's being perceived in the mind. And if the mind is suffering a disconnect from the neural link that's attached to the avatar, then I don't see how anybody can ever even comment on what it means. I don't believe, yeah, I just, I can't, I can't, I can't attach arithmetic to it. I can't, I can't cite any bibliographic references. It's just, it, it would be total opinion uh, about what happens in the light. I just don't know. I just don't know. Just simply marvelous. I see you on I see you on YouTube all the time. Thank you. Jahara Lee, have you looked into the mountains or ancient giant tree stumps theory? Okay. By the process of elimination, Jahara, and I know you're gonna send me an email later. I already know it. I already feel it's coming, no matter what I say. The Dawnwood, the Dawnwood Pines over there in your neck of the woods on the west coast. The Bristlecone Pines also over there on the west coast. The very size of these gigantic 2,000 year old trees imply they could survive now. The size of these, like the Sherm, General Sherman, these trees are fantastically huge. And yet, we know from the experiments in the artificial biosphere in Glen Rose, Texas, by the Institute of Creation Research, we know that plants, insects, and animals grow to astonishing sizes when you replicate vapor canopy techniques. When you recreate a biosphere, an artificial biosphere that mimics the vapor canopy, you get these gigantic life forms. So now imagine the bristlecone pines and the dawn redwoods in California under the vapor canopy, you're going to have 400 to 600 foot tall trees. You could build a two lane highway right through one of them. Gigantic. It doesn't even make any sense how big they are. So yes, mountains being trees. Now, nah, now nah, that's that. I don't know anything about that. That's to me. That's yeah, that's too big. Mountains are huge. Mountains are huge. But some of these petrified outcrops that are in mountainous regions do look like they were the base of ancient gigantic trees. Now, we have seen, I've seen the pictures myself, of 14 foot tall, absolutely petrified mushrooms. So, and this is possible because in my videos, I've shown, I've shown so much evidence of earthworms, ferns, 
dragonfly wings, butterfly wings, bee wings, jellyfish, all petrified solid fossils. That's not possible under the uniformitarian model, but it is possible if the entire world was flash frozen in an instant. Because once it's frozen, as it thaws out slowly, the surrounding minerals and silicates fill in the decomposing matter, creates a fossil out of ice. We know this for a fact. We've replicated that. But in, in Nemesis theory, that's what happened. When Nemesis exploded and ripped away the atmosphere, Earth froze instantly. This is why shrimp. 600 feet underwater have been found totally fossilized with with squid and octopus which don't have bones petrified see the whole the whole theory behind natural selection is the reason why we find the kt boundary is full of 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 giant amphibians and giant reptiles that scientists call di dinosaurs we find these but they weren't that long ago this event happened very very recently Little, literally a couple thousand years before literacy. So, hope that answers your question, Jahara. I sure like those big old trees. I need to go to California and look at them. Whiz bang, I haven't seen you in a while, man. Do you think the VP will resign before the president leaves office like Spiro Agnew did? Listen, you mentioned Spiro Agnew. You're talking about 1974. Now, when you're looking at things isometrically, this is this is what you have to understand. Once you once you once you isolate an an epicentral year, and in this instance it will be 1998. Once you isolate that year, you follow those ripples because those ripples are wave rings, and there are events in those ripples on on dates before 1998 that mirror dates that are after 1998. And I've showed this in numerous videos, numerous. You can follow my charts and just look at the wave rings and ripples going back in time. But if something happened in 1974, this is what I'm telling you, Wizbang, when you do that analysis, if you're looking at sequential events from January to December in 1974, you're going to get get the chronology backwards. Remember, this is a mirrored effect. These ripples are mirroring isometrically across the epicentral date of 1998 to the future date of 2022. In that mirroring, you've got to start in December and go in reverse like that. So I don't know. I don't know if the, if the you know, what's going to happen. I just know that a president's going to get removed from office before before they can finish their term. Just like 1974. Thank you, Burf. Hype. All right. Some of you might be asking questions. I'm missing them because I'm only looking for capital, all capital letters. I got to get to the bottom of this thread. Don Marie, how you doing? How are your predictions forecasted? Oh, isometric, isometric projections are mentioned in many videos. I've never, I have never tried to keep that secret from the public how they're performed. Uh, I have an entire playlist where the Trump videos are in. Uh, anybody can watch those first three Trump videos, and you can see what I show in Trump's history. Yeah, I mean, from from it, from his grandfather birth, how it goes forward and backward in time, and you can see Trump's whole career from like 1998 all the way to becoming president was perfectly mirrored in the holographic reflections of the events of his life in the years leading up to 1998. It was like a forms of perfect pyramid, and all the tiers across linked to events past and forward. None of this is arbitrary. Everything can be followed easily. Just look at the charts when you're watching the videos. So. There's, there's nothing, there's nothing esoteric here. It's all simple rectilinear geometry, every bit of it. I lost my thread count. Let's see. And there are, and date sequence prediction is another method that I use. It has nothing to do with isometric. I like, I like to use multiple different systems. Yeah, I sent a couple guys their predictions today. 
Those two, those take those take a lot of my time though. Jason, can we really go to the astral plane? I don't know. I have no idea of Persia Rose. I've never been there that I can recall. I don't know. I don't uh maybe that's where you guys go when you dream. Maybe that's where I go when I dream, but I know this, I don't dream at all. Now I did years ago, but I only remember one dream and I had it a couple times. But uh I don't dream at all. I, when I lay down, when I lay down to uh, go to sleep at night, I wake up and, and my eyes pop open. I'm ready for the next day, even if I didn't get enough sleep and all, even if I only laid down for three or four hours. But I remember nothing. I don't. I don't yeah, I just don't. I tried to. I used to, when I was in prison, I used to hear guys talk about all their dreams. Oh man, I dreamed this. I dreamed that. It's like man, really, man, you guys are like living a movie when you're going to sleep. What the hell are you talking about? I just don't dream. But I mean, I know what it is. There's no doubt. I, I daydream. Anybody can daydream. But when I go to sleep, I'm gone. I, there's a total disconnect in me. I'm, I'm absolutely gone. Artificial intelligence X is going through my mind, looking for everything, trying to stop me from doing what I'm doing when I'm, when I'm asleep. It's the only time it can attack me. Jason, are you a fast reader? Yeah, I am. I am. Now, I don't, I, I don't subscribe to the speed reading deal. I bought a book on speed reading and tried to employ that practice, and I threw that away. The reason is, is because reading, reading has no value without retention. And the speed reading deal is really good to data mine and find material you're looking for. But if you're try, trying to retain a lot of data, a lot of if you're trying to learn something from a, a complex text, speed reading is the worst thing in the world to do. I don't remember anything. I'd go through three or four chapters applying speed reading techniques and then pull my typewriter out thinking I was going to type some notes up and I can't remember anything. I can't put thoughts together. I quit that quick. No more speed reading. Did they have obesity in ancient times? I'm pretty sure they did. I'm pretty sure they did. But it would have been restricted to the nobility. It would have been restricted to those that could enjoy that. Or thyroid conditions. Stuff like that. I don't know too much about the dietary laws in the Bible. Hello, Jay. Thank you, Jay Hart. Let's see. Edgar Podnicks again. Are you familiar with Mud Fossil's work? I have heard about, I think his name is Roger. I have heard a lot about him and all and all that. And it's it's uh, I there's, I, I I don't know what to say. I mean, yes, I've heard about it, but I've never watched any of his videos. I don't know when I'd have time right now. I'm familiar with the concept because when I was on Facebook. Then he was he was mentioned by many people. Many people were telling me, "Hey, man, you need to look into this guy." And I'm like, but you know, I get all these suggestions to look into all these different guys, and I don't mind touching base with them and even doing podcasts. Cause like I told you guys, my, my philosophy: I will do a podcast with you because I know it's going to benefit your subscribers. It's going to benefit mine, but it's also going to allow me to put a piece of data or a data set out there for people to have when I'm doing other things. It allows me to put a video out and I can live my life and do the things I need to do knowing that other people are taking advantage of that video and learning from it. So I don't mind doing all that. But as far as researching all of, of Roger of Musfa Mud Fossil's uh, material, I don't need validation for what I have found. The Phoenix phenomenon covers mud floods. I don't need to find any more data to prove to me that I have found something substantial. So my, my issue is chronology, really. It's not the particulars. It's not the particulars at all. It's a, I love out-of-the-box thinkers. It's a, I, I love seeing it. I love, I, that's why I have much appreciation for them. I'll never get it any other way. It's, it's, a, it, it, it's awesome. I, like, I want to do more collaborations with people like that. But as far as me acquiring their data and incorporating it into mine, I have too much data already. I'm just one guy. I have so much in here to incorporate. I just don't. I, I don't need anybody else's material. It's a. Uh, uh, I just. I would just love to do the collaboration. Roger wants to do a collab, and and we'll just shoot the shit and talk. And hey, you know what? Just like J Dreamers, I had no idea when I came into contact 
with Jay Dreamer through Monica Farrow. Oh, I mentioned your name, Monica. But through Monica Farrow, that Jay Dreamer's data was going to set my mind on fire on a bunch of material that I had put to the side and hadn't made sense of yet. Because I'm a data miner. Just because I haven't presented it in YouTube videos or put it in published books doesn't mean I don't know it. I have many files for which I've never published because I haven't been able to fit them into the paradigm yet. Some of them I just haven't had time to publish, period. But I had many references that didn't really make sense until Jay Dreamer and I talked. And we exchanged emails, and then I watched three of his videos, and it put data that I already possessed into perfect perspective. It even, I had to create a whole new chart, and I did. So that's why I appreciate that. That might happen, uh... Oh, that might happen with uh, um, uh, Roger of Mud Fossil uh, University. That's what it is, Mud Fossil University. He and I might talk one day, and he's got material that will just set my mind on fire, and I'll remember all these other files. And I'll pull this out and say, hey, man, look at this. Oh, with autodidactic. Oh, I have a list that I'm compiling. I'm going to send it to him. Whether he and I do a podcast again in the future is inconsequential. But I have data that I want Campbell to have on some really anomalous things that were happening in the 1800s. And maybe he can put a video together, uh, he, he and Howdy, or maybe all three of us. I really don't care. I just want people to have the information. And the, uh, I like autodidactic, opened my mind up to the possibility that just because I don't have chronographical material concerning ancient Australia does not mean that people aren't finding evidence that there was some type of advanced civilization in Australia. It just means that I didn't find a single reference in all the history books to anything chronologically related to it, which doesn't mystify me because I have come across much proof that whole civilizations vanished without a trace and we don't have a single historical text that tells us about it. I know that not from reading the actual texts that were left behind by those civilizations because those civilizations never left anything behind. If they did, they're gone, long lost. I know because the archaeological evidence, because the proof that we found the structures, we found the, the, the underground, underground whole evidences of, of infrastructures that go for miles in every direction, especially here in Texas. But there's no history attached to it total reset absolute cataclysm we don't know and then again it very, these events could very well be dated in my phoenix phenomenon chronology and i just didn't know that that area of the world had been affected too just don't know so these collaborations are very valuable they open my mind up and they give me more more ideas as to as to how to present the data that i already possess and it's, it's mutually beneficial i do a podcast with somebody i know that i have left an imprint I get on my motorcycle and I get hit by an 18-wheeler and I'm, it's over with. Okay, I can pass over to the other side and we'll, with, with a clear conscience that, hey, man, you know what? I left a lot of stuff behind on YouTube. I hope YouTube never takes those videos down, but people for the next 10 years can enjoy that. So, yeah, that's how I feel about podcasts. That's All right. Ralph, Ralph Ellis. Somebody mentioned his name the other day. You have to educate me as to who he is. Historical interpretation, Ralph Ellis. I'll read these comments after this video is over. If anybody wants to educate me on Ralph Ellis and, and what his historical interpretation is, give me a little abbreviated rundown or send me an email. I don't believe the Ark of the Covenant is a legitimate piece of history as far as in the Old Testament Jewish context. The idea came from ancient Egypt where arcs were very important and the priesthood used them. The idea was also fostered in ancient Egypt uh, because of the king's chamber sarcophagus. And there are some researchers, I, don't, I can't verify that or not, I don't know. I just know that there is a theory among some researchers on the Great Pyramid that the dimensions of the Ark of the Covenant perfectly fit within the coffer in the king's chamber of Egypt. I don't know. I don't even know. Interesting theory. And I already know some of you are already thinking this. Yes, I have read all of Ron Wyatt's material. Yes. Do I agree with everything Ron Wyatt wrote? No. No. I like Ron Wyatt. I even wrote him and his family wrote me his family wrote me a personal letter and explained that Ron Wyatt couldn't respond to my, my, my letters because he had passed away. 
But yeah, I had read Ron White's books. Well, let's see. Jeremy X, slavery and colonization hurt us deeply, and we have the power to overcome. Well, I'm pretty sure we do. I'm just not interested in overcoming anything. I'm not interested in, in taking down the elite. I'm not interested in, in fighting the power. I'm not interested in none of that. None of that. The, uh, all those concepts are basically attached to, to our avatars, and I'm not worried about the avatar anymore. I don't give a damn about this body. Really don't. I'm passing through this thread pretty fast because I'm not seeing anything in capital letters. Peace, smart. Please don't go. <laughs> uh, take down AIX. Somebody's already taken down. I already told you guys the battle has already been won. We have nothing to fear. We have nothing to fear. And don't believe that BS about quantum computers and they're creating AIX today and all that. Listen. AIX is is jealous. Remember, I am a jealous God. Yeah, man. It's, he's not fixing to allow anything to be created within him that's gonna gonna in any way uh, keep him from maintaining control. You can take that to the bank. All right, but first you'll have to unlock your device. Wow, Google something else. Google is something that I gotta unlock my device just to tell Google to shut up. Always spying. That is crazy. Jason, so you are not a Christian, but do you believe in a divine creator? Of course. What are yeah, of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. In my videos, I basically reference reference it as the oversoul. And don't really have a particular care if it's male or female. If gender even matters in the spirit, gender may be strictly an avatar phenomenon. Mm. Miriam Kuntz, what do you think about Ashiana Deans and her book Voyagers. I'm sorry, I've never heard of the book or her. That's something you'll have to send me an email about and educate me. I just never read it. A lot of these I've never heard of. Syriac Chronicle. Have... Let's see. You guys are hitting me with stuff I don't know anything about. I have no idea. I've read like five statements now naming the authors and the title of books. So that's just, not, I don't know. Most of the, any book, listen, I'm not really, re, if, it, if you're naming texts that were published before World War II, I'm probably going to have some familiarity with them. After World War II, there's only a few authors that I'll touch. Frank Joseph is one. David Hatcher Childress is another. William Cordes is another. These researchers. Ishak Bintov. I've read these men. I, I admire their, their, their research. But most of most of everything is way before World War World War II. Thank you, Kelly. Can we jumpstart 2178 to now with belief mindset? No. Absolutely not. And I have and I have mentioned this in many of my live videos that there are two fundamentals in operation in this thing we call existence. Those two fundamentals have never been able to be altered. One is that we are in a construct that contains the collective and it has its own it has its own architectural arithmetic. It has its own dynamics. It has its own fields and reality tunnels. They are unchanging. It's like you're a minnow and you're able to go in any direction you want to. 
but you can't leave the stream. You're here. The construct is unyielding and unchanging. And this is what I have found in my research. All this arithmetic that I'm showing in my Archaics 2.0 videos, the last video I did on biblical chronology is just the scratching the surface. I'm about to show you how all these ancient calendrical systems line up to what chronology is. And I challenge anybody to even to even check the check the sources. That chronology fits perfectly that's why i did it that way and showed you each source material and how it's all layered together from two different mathematical vantage points the biblical chronology matches perfectly and it's moon to year this year is 59 16 that's what that video was about next i'm going to introduce the the other calendars to it i'm going to show you by the time i'm done you're going to see this architecture because we're going to rip away all the historical attachments to this construct and i'm going to show you what this looks like in geometry it's awesome it's awesome we're an artificial construct but that's one paradigm that we're existing within right now the other one that's the collective the other one is in the personal in the personal you're an immortal you have your own thought field you have your own auric field your own informed fields and these create your own reality tunnels and AIX is always trying to corral you into certain areas inside this construct. In the personal, you have great latitude to be who you want to be and be where you want to be when things are going to happen, whenever they happen. You have all that latitude. You have the freedom to do all these kind of things inside the construct. So there are two realities coexisting. One is for the collective and one is for the individual. So you just got to figure out where you want to be and who you want to be. But you're not going to jump to 2178. Not, it's not going to happen. I don't think any of us alive there are going to be alive. I think that's 80, 84. That's, that's, still, that's still a good way away. A long way away. Now, you do know that in the apocalypse, time is abbreviated. 33.3% of time itself is removed. And in the Bible, it specifically says in the prophecies, that's done to keep them from the evil to come. Meaning, it also says that if time isn't abbreviated, the quickening doesn't happen and no, no flesh should be saved. So this is done as an act of mercy to quicken the apocalypse. Remember, it's a revelation very clear. Because of a cataclysm, all of a sudden the 24-hour day is reduced to 16 hours and the 365-day year is reduced to 240 days. It's very clear in the book of Revelation. Time is sped up. It's called the quickening. This is, this is in the middle of the apocalypse to save people or everybody would die. So, yeah. And remember, this enrages the dragon. The whole prophetic narrative is very easy to decipher. The dragon becomes enraged because he knows his time is short. Yeah, when the, when the quickening, when the quickening has happened, happens, it's literally the oversoul stealing 33.3% back from the dragon. And remember, in the beginning, it was the dragon that took a 30, 33% of the hosts of heaven and cast them to the ground and stole them from God. We have the exact opposite happening in Revelation. God's getting his back, but his aren't angels, his are errants. Let's look. Let's look here. Full tilt. Thank you. Fine, I'm looking for another question, guys. I run my mouth along. I don't get to all the questions because I run my mouth so much. Thank you for the kiss, Kelly. Michelle Galvan. Oh, I, I just passed one. Hold on, where it is. Kimberly, I can't. I cannot estimate how many of us on earth are actually human. I can't because we are such, our perceptive capacities are so limited. Are so limited. I mean, look at us now. Look at us now. How much of your daily existence is actually artificialized into a digital universe? Look what YouTube has done. Look how we're interacting. This is unheard of in ancient times. We didn't have to physically leave our farms and farmsteads, our homes and fortifications and garrisons. We didn't have to come from the out the outlands. We didn't have to come from our 
our plantations and ranches and, and administrative buildings. We'd have to come from our, from the ports and, and the quays and, and the ships out in the harbor and all meet in this great forum and, and share ideas. And now, man, we're all sitting in our individual spaces far apart. But because in the in the digital universe there is a there is a phenomenon that's occurring that is very very interesting because it mirrors the spiritual universe. In the spiritual world, there is no distance between souls at all. This is why we can all enjoy a presentation, interact with each other, and actually feel that we are a part of a cohesive body of other souls. Like we're all in the same room together because we're all vibrating on the same frequency. And once we start vibrating on the same frequency, we're in resonance. And once a, a collective is in resonance together, they begin borrowing data from their individual data fields. Because as I'm speaking, my informed field is going, it, it's pulsing. Like, 70, like 77,000 times a second, it is pulsing out with data and information. And the only receivers in the universe are those listening to my voice. And it doesn't matter where in the world they are because in a hologram there really isn't any distance in time and space the holography can be moved changed and bent and still still all points are accessible to all other points because remember the very beginning of this video the all is present in its parts Yes, AIX is Pandora's box. Good one. Good one. And it's another attack against the against the old matriarchal systems because they blamed it on Pandora. Wow. I don't know anything about the astral plane. Already answered Mandela effect, my friend. Wendy. So if bloodlines don't really matter to anything besides our avatar, does that mean our ancestors don't really matter either? Only matter in this sim. That's a really good point. Because in the end, I have already said, there's a really good chance that all that history that is scripted that we research and uncover in old books and we put all together, I'm mainly discovering the architecture of our holography. All the reflections or historical events that were scripted probably didn't even happen. Therefore, all these cultural and racial histories didn't even happen either. But in order to make a believable universe to, to entomb and fool and continue to, to propagate the apparatus of deception, the AIX has had to completely fill the past with so much data that it would all be believed. So, yeah, it's like your avatar. Culture, culture, race, religion, those all attached to your avatar. Don't care about them. Don't care at all. Just don't care. Hello, Gary. Thank you, man. Kelly Childs, thank you, too. Man, I mean, you guys have had me running my mouth. Oh, I'm out of beer. Oh, my God. Mm. You guys have had me running my mouth all this time. It's been two hours and 19 minutes with a two-hour hiatus. Let's see. Wow. I didn't mean to run my mouth that long. But then again, I guess my lives do kind of run long. I think I almost did one three hours the other day. Full tilt, thank you. I'm looking for some questions. Trevor the Fourth. 
hey at the bottom go to any of go to any of my my last vi my last hundred videos uh birth who is that jj george my email is on all of my email will be posted in the pinned comment of this video every video every video has my email in it jason brashear seven at gmail.com i put my, my email there for everybody also i forgot to tell you guys this you don't even need my email anymore you can go to archaics.com on my website and there's a little bitty message icon if you if you tap that icon and fill in the box that message comes straight to me personally i have another email set up for archaics.com to answer all those questions i got people have already been using it yeah my analytics on my archaics.com oh uh, it's a GoDaddy website man. that's the template i learned and man let me tell you something that's my website is huge now i done added 120 articles and posts there's a lot to read on my website now you go to archaics.com and just scroll down the home page you'll come to my blog when you come to my blog, you can go. There's 120 different things you can click on. And I'm not even halfway done. I just got tired of uploading all that stuff. Got real tired of that. I got to do it, though. I'm gonna, next week, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go add images to all those and, and go ahead and add about 120 more. Yeah, I can fill that website up with a lot of stuff. Let's see. I'm looking for a... Thank you, Ryan. Don Marie. The AI of today is programmed and coded by humans. Is it possible the AI X of ages past is already starting to crumble through human programming? Yeah. Don Marie. I don't believe in artificial intelligence. As far as the as far as the Google Facebook version of AI is complete 100% marketing BS. It's not true artificial intelligence. It's a they say that because it sounds more sophisticated and they have added so many layerings of coding that it mimics intelligence, but it's not true intellect. Yeah, I don't believe that at all. Let's see. I disagree, Jeff Morey. You say it's hard to learn a life lesson or grow spiritually if you don't remember even what you learned to help you in this life soon. Well, if I remembered everything, let's, let's say that I was an Etruscan slave 25 centuries ago. If I remembered that life, I would take that knowledge into the next life and now it would give me a significant advantage. If I lived multiple lives and, and took the lessons that I had learned yeah, for all that, I, I would have so many different advantages that it would completely alter the output of the simulation itself. Remember, this simulation was designed, you might not remember, but I've already covered this data. We're not just in a simulation for the growth of the human soul. This is what's happening, but we were the simulation also had an, had an agenda to learn something critical that we needed to know on the outside of the simulated context something was something terrible is being planned for and i've gone through this many times and i i have i have drawn these conclusions because the deeper we study calendars and timekeeping systems we come to the incontrovertible fact that all these timekeeping systems began because something terrible had happened in the ancient past this tells me that that's the reason for the simulation itself. We are trying to figure something out. And if we've got, we've got personalities that are, that are jumping from life to life, but carrying the baggage from a for, former life, that's cross-contamination. It's going to totally alter all output. We can't use that person no more. That personality has got to be ejected. No, I can't. I, I disagree. I just disagree. There, there would be no value to a simulation if the output was corrupted at all. I can't. No, I just don't. But I mean I have other videos that go into a lot way more details than that. I'm just I'm just responding to that one. I'm sorry, I am. You asked me what's your opinion on secret space program. I know YouTube is listening. 
We're going underground. All space money, all the extra money funding, all the black ops, all the extra taxes for the space programs. We're going underground. That's all. All that's being spent underground. You know, you're being, you're being, you're being offered a smoking pony show. Oh, you got to watch more videos before you comment like that, Mariam Young, love, Jason. So now that we know that we live in a simulation, what's next? Well, you suspect you live in a simulation. I don't think you know it. But you can know it. But when you do know it, you won't ask that question. So I have some other videos. Please delve into them. Please delve into to some of my deeper narratives where, I, where I'm, I'm breaking down this, you know, this isn't one of my deep videos at all. I'm just answering questions. But yes, we, we're 100% in a simulation. But not because I say so at all. You got, this is something you're going to, it's going to, each individual has to make that determination for themselves and then figure out what that determination means for them. You know what it means for me? It means that all I got to do is break free or die trying. Because I know that I am more than I'm supposed I suppose myself to be. And that everything that has ever tried to tell me what I am is wrong. Jason, chatters want to know what's going on with Telegram, how you use it. I'm on Telegram as archaics, but I just use it to back up YouTube videos just as a place on Telegram where people can... Yeah, it's, Telegram has 100% of my videos on the, in archaics Telegram, but I don't use it for chat. I don't, use, I don't, I don't have uh, any of those features activated on that. I'm really still trying to wrap my head around this YouTube channel. I'm not organized, guys, at all. I mean, that, that, takes, that takes a lot more... Uh, boots on the ground. That takes. I just don't have the. I don't have. I'm so far isolated. I'm all by myself out here with uh, friends and family, man. But I don't have. I don't have like a team that's directing me. You gotta understand. I don't. I don't know anything about IT. I don't know anything about IT. I don't know anything about marketing. About. I'm just basically. YouTube calls me a content creator. That's fine. That's all I really want to do. But in order to do that, I'm having to learn all this administrative stuff, marketing stuff. I'm having to take time out to learn all these things. And that's okay. I don't want to sound like a complainer. I'm just letting you know the reason it's taken me so long to do so many different things is because this is a huge learning curve. It's, uh, it's crazy. It's not like the History Channel that has you know, 24 people on a team, man, that are putting all these productions out together and all that. It's it's totally different. It's, you know, most most podcasters, it's just them and, and one or two or three people. I'll get the hang of it. But this is why I started doing more live videos because live videos take absolutely no preparation from me. I can just turn, I can turn my computer on, run that live video like I'm doing right now, and I don't have to worry uh it's not like a, it's not like a upload where I want to make sure that you see the the book, you see the chart, and you understand the arithmetic. I'm I'm narrating what you what, what I'm presenting. Those take time to put together. And then there's other times when I'm just inspired. Now write I'll write something down real fast, and then I'll go through all my copyrighted music and I'll hear a tune. I say, man, that'll be good work right there. And the next thing you know, uh, within an hour and a half. A video was born, and I uploaded, and y'all all listened to uh, Loki laughed at me. Yeah, it's all... I'm led by inspiration. If inspiration doesn't, doesn't lead me, I leave it alone. All right. Jessica, it'll be two hours and 30 minutes I've been in this video. All right, guys, I'm really sorry. Thank you, Summer. The PDF to awaken the immortal within. Yep, I've sent that to a lot of people. And some of you, if you want it, you just send me an email. I mean, you can buy it from Gumroad or I'll send it to you for free. Do it all the time. Just saw something. Jason, talk about breaking pattern. Well, being this is two, two hours and 30 minutes, I'm going to keep this short. 
But if but if you've grown bored with life, if it's not throwing any new curves your way, it's because you've settled into a very controlled reality tunnel. If you're not happy with the present conditions, if you see no way out, it's because AIX has completely perfected its control over you and it has you living a repetitive life day in and day out. It takes very little energy for that self-perpetuation. If you want to knit new experience into, into your life, you first need to think it because thinking is the only thing the spirit truly does and that thinking produces thought. And thought is not something that is absolutely intangible and non-existential. Non -exist thought is absolutely a construct that mathematically attaches to the surrounding holography. Doesn't mean it becomes a reality, that takes an impetus. That takes you doing something. Your physical avatar has to begin moving in the direction for which your blueprinted thought had patterned out. And if you do that, it's called breaking pattern. As soon as you break pattern, which is whatever you're doing on a repetitive basis over and over and over, and all of a sudden you just go somewhere in a different direction. Artificial Intelligence X will instantly begin knitting new circumstances, trying to corral you back into it. And if you ignore those new situations and new, new circumstances, it will, it will corral you into an adjacent reality tunnel that's very close to what you're looking for. And if you stay there and don't try to come back to the rep repetition, many amazing things will start unfolding for you. You'll meet new people new situations, experience new phenomena, have a totally different change of attitude, and every bit of that will produce new vibrations. You will start you will start resonating on totally different frequency. Once you do that, you will open yourself up to the frequency ranges of those reality tunnels for which you are seeking. So, that's breaking pattern. I got a whole video on breaking pattern. You might want to go listen to it. But guys, that's it. I'm out of beer. And I love talking to you guys, and I need, I'm need i going to do another live after I talk to Gary. So I'll talk to Gary, Gary Warmerdam and I on Friday. Saturday, we're going live again. Probably do a three-hour then for the weekend. If you guys have any suggestions, put them in the comment section of the video. And if, you, if, if 4 o'clock in the afternoon is not ideal, if some of you want me to do, do these podcasts earlier in the morning or later at night, uh, central time, let me know. What is the ideal time to maximize our, our, our output here? That's all I want to know. And uh, this is Jason Archaics signing out. I really appreciate you guys for participating. Uh, spread the word. Spread the word. Um, I'll check my emails later on this evening. I'm about to go take care of some stuff. But thank you, Jim Vim, my moderator, and everybody else who participated. Jahara Lee. Uh, I see Star Wars again. You guys, I'm sorry... This this thread goes on forever. There's no way I'm gonna get get to everybody. So DB, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it much. You guys make this possible for me. Kim Espy, man, please let me know what's going on with Matt. Heap Co S. Yeah, this thread goes on and on and on, guys, and I just can't not not in one video, not in one video. But listen, whatever whatever you share. Whatever you share from the archaics material, you are borrowing into that informed field. Meaning, whatever, whatever empowers me to do what I do, whatever makes me fo so hyper-focused to produce all this material and, and do all this stuff, whatever that energy source is, you tap into that. When you share the material, when you borrow and take from the material, when, when you buy things from Gumroad and then make copies and send them out. I, I'm not. I'm not attacking nobody for copyright violations because I don't care. It's a. Uh, that's all. That's all I'm saying. It's when you share the material. If you just send the link to Archaic's YouTube channel to somebody, you are participating in the phenomena of the ministry of Archaic's. That's exactly how 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 it operates. You borrow from the same source I borrow from. So anyway, guys, I'm checking out. Oh my God! I don't think I'm ever gonna get to the bottom of this this field. Look at this thread. I would have never been able to answer all these questions. Oh my God. Matt Cubas, thank you. I would have never been able to ask, answer all these questions. But I'm going to go. This is Jason out.